We really need to start paying attention to digital rights and digital privacy because our digital rights are under serious attack. And in some cases, maybe even our constitutional rights, those of us in the U.S., but even in other locations, many nations around the world have constitutions that guarantee certain freedoms and certain rights, especially the right to privacy. And due to the recent COVID-19 pandemic, there are a lot of greedy, evil, proprietary software companies out there that are trying to take advantage of the situation and they're trying to violate your rights. And in many cases, you guys are letting them do it because of the circumstances. You know, the circumstances right now kind of dictate that, you know, these are special circumstances. So so I'll allow these evil, greedy corporations to do this to me right now because, you know, it's kind of a weird time. I may have not let them do it before, but I'll let them do it now. No, guys, we have to stand strong, maybe more so now than ever. We have to stand up for our digital rights and our digital freedoms. So I had a viewer of the channel contact me and he wrote over on the DistroTube subreddit. He posted this and it was a public post, so I don't mind sharing it. And his username was Unix21311. He writes in, Hi DT, my university, Western Sydney University, has decided because of the COVID-19 virus, they are going to force students to undertake exams by installing a spyware on their computer through a browser add-on called ProctorU. This particular program can see what is on your screen, track your entire body, including your eyeballs, to see if you are cheating or not, check your browser history, collect personal information such as the hardware info of your PC. This is a huge privacy invasion, and it is not right how our university is forcing students to install a spyware on our PCs. There have been other articles that have criticized how ProctorU can potentially invade people's privacy, and he links to a PDF, which is actually a letter that's addressed to another university, which I'll discuss here in a minute. He goes on to write, I was wondering if you could please do a video on this and discuss this because it's a serious issue, please. I think this is a very serious issue and I do want to address this. Now, the uh, link that he sent me is to a letter that was addressed to the UC Santa Barbara Faculty Association. It was a very lengthy letter written by uh, several folks, drafted by several folks addressing uh, the University of California at Santa Barbara basically stating that they did not want their students to be subjected to using, in particular, programs like ProctorU. That particular letter is dated March 13th, 2020, so just a couple of months ago that letter was sent to the faculty administration, and it mentions the, what they call, quote, serious violations of constitutional rights by partnering with ProctorU, unquote. So they specifically mention the Proctor U software. And when they say serious constitutional rights being violated, no doubt they're referring to here in the U.S., our First Amendment. Our First Amendment lists many fundamental rights, including freedom of expression, freedom of speech, uh, freedom of religion, freedom of press, things like that. And those freedoms basically imply that we have a right to privacy because obviously without the right to privacy, you can't really have freedom of expression. You don't have the freedom to think and speak as you wish if you're being watched all the time. So really the First Amendment implies that all of us have a fundamental, basic human right to privacy. The letter to the UC Santa Barbara faculty is rather lengthy, but I did want to share with you one paragraph here, and I will read this paragraph. It goes on to state, quote, from information readily available on their website, one can see the categories of information that ProctorU regularly collects and discloses to third parties, which include social security numbers, driver's license numbers, passport numbers, other personal identifiers, biometric information, including genetic, physiological, behavioral, gender identity, biological characteristics, activity patterns, and identifying information unique to each user, including fingerprints, face prints, voice prints, iris and retina scans, IP addresses, device identifiers, browser history, search history, information about the student's interactions with other websites, applications, advertisements, medical information including medical conditions, physical disability, mental disability, photographs, video, audio recordings, education, employment information including that related to citizenship. Moreover, in the event that ProctorU is involved in a bankruptcy, merger, acquisition, reorganization, or sale of assets, our students' information may be sold or transferred as part of that transaction. That is really scary stuff when you think about that. So for those of you that are not familiar with ProctorU, 
it's basically a way for students, or not just students, this can be used for uh, certification exams for whatever industry you happen to work in or whatever. It's for remote examinations, and they need all of your information. They want your driver's license. They want copies of passports and things like that, you know, to identify that you are you. You know, they want you know, photographs. They, they want everything about you, all the information, and they do monitor everything you do on your computer because it's to combat cheating, right? They want to know everything that you are accessing on your computer. They're also watching you through a camera, and if your eyeballs move away from the screen for too long, it assumes you're cheating and you fail. Clearly, no rational or sane human being would ever install such a grotesque piece of software on their computers. But our school systems seem to think our students, they really don't have a say in the matter. We're going to force them to use this, mainly for sake of the convenience of the schools or the universities. Now, the quarantine period from the COVID-19 pandemic is starting to end. Here in the U.S., pretty much all 50 states have kind of let the quarantine period end, and we're starting to return back to normal. People are going back to work. All the restaurants are, are starting to open back up. Everything is returning to normal, except our schools. And I don't quite understand that. Uh, many school systems are saying that they plan to continue using their remote services, you know, their video conferencing software, at least until the end of the year. They're using things like Zoom and Microsoft Teams and Skype and all of that to hold these virtual classrooms. Of course, all that software is proprietary software, but I don't want to focus too much on the fact that they use a lot of proprietary software in our universities. I kind of understand why our universities tend to use all that proprietary software, especially from the likes of corporations like Microsoft. Microsoft has so much money and influence and they can afford to promote their products. Sometimes at these steep discounts, you know, they can promote all that onto these school systems. They can send people to go talk to these guys. And the people that run our school systems, they're not technical people. They're not technically inclined. They don't make any decisions regarding software based on any technical reasons. They, they, they can't make those decisions based on technical reasons because that's not who they are. So, you know, they don't know better when it comes to choosing free and open source software over proprietary software. So I, I won't slam them too hard on that. But when it comes to something like ProctorU, they absolutely should know better. They should know better. You don't need to be a computer geek or some highly technical person, you don't need to be a sysadmin to make a morally correct decision regarding something like ProctorU. Anyone with any basic common sense can make the moral decision regarding something like ProctorU because ProctorU is very clear and upfront and exactly what it's going to do to you. It tells you exactly how it plans to violate you. ProctorU is designed to digitally rape the people that install its software. And as somebody that has done some teaching in the past, uh, I can tell you as educators, as teachers, your primary role should be not just to educate your students, but to protect your students, not just in the physical classroom, but also in the digital classroom. If they're subjected to such a thing, you're doing all these Zoom and Teams and Skype virtual classes. Great. Make sure they're protected in that sort of environment, too. And if you're subjecting them to something like ProctorU, you are failing your students in a big way. When a student is under the tutelage of a teacher, that student should be safe. Any teacher that allows their students to be subjected to such a malicious company as ProctorU, well, you know what? I say that teacher is derelict in his or her duties and really should not be in the industry. And what really angers me about this whole situation is not that the evil proprietary software companies like ProctorU are trying to take advantage of this crisis, because that's that's kind of what evil companies do. That's what corporations do. If they can take advantage of somebody to make an extra buck, they'll do it. But why are our school systems? Our school systems are seeming to take advantage of our kids during this crisis. And why are we standing for that? And another thing, why are we not allowing our students to go to class? Why are they not allowed to take their tests in the classroom? Because we're trying to prevent the spread of COVID-19. But we have all these restaurant workers and supermarket workers that have been going to work every day during the entire uh, quarantine period. These workers in these industries, they managed to adjust during the pandemic. 
and, you know, to adjust the way they do business and the way they work, you know, with masks and gloves and keeping a distance. And why are our university students not able to adjust, make the same kind of adjustments and do the same thing and return to class? Could these students actually go to a classroom and take their exams in a safe environment? Of course they could. Of, of course they could. Our school systems have sold them out, though, and they've sold out our students basically for our sake of convenience so they can sell these overpriced degrees that aren't worth the paper that they are printed on. So I want to make a quick appeal right now to the students out there. You guys, if you're a student and you're listening to this, do not accept this. Inform your teachers, your professors, the dean of your college, the president of the university, the media, the press, any bloggers. Tell anyone that will listen to you, anybody that will give you five minutes of their time. Tell anyone about it. Tell them that you will not stand for this and let them know that there could be serious legal consequences to forcing students like yourself to use services like ProctorU. When you mention that there could be legal ramifications, I promise you, the president of your university and your teachers and your professors, they will take note and they will listen to what you have to say. And one last thing to all the students out there, know this. There are people out there that have your back in this. There are organizations out there, specifically the FSF, the Free Software Foundation, and the EFF, the Electronic Frontier Foundation. They are out there and they are going to help you defend your digital rights and your digital privacy, even if your teachers and your professors will not help you defend those. Before I go, I need to thank a few special people. This episode was produced by Michael, Mitchell, Gabe, Haplo, Nate, Arch5530, Chris, Chuck, DJ, Donnie, Dylan, George, Haplo, LibreQuest, Omri, Paul, Rob, Sean, and Willie. These guys, they are my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon. They are the producers of this show. The show is also supported by each and every one of these ladies and gentlemen. All these names you're seeing on the screen, they are all my supporters over on Patreon because this show, this channel, is sponsored by you guys, the community you'd like to help support my work, consider doing so. You'll find DistroTube over on Patreon. All right, guys. Peace.